Hi everyone, so let me give you a detailed clip on the fuel tank of the Zen. This is an interesting one and I'm sure you'll love this. So as seen here, the Zen was driven from Chennai to Palanpur, Gujarat covering over 1700 kilometers over two days. The two drivers took turns to drive, but they had to take multiple stops to change the fuel filter due to the rusted fuel tank on the Zen. So the next thing on my immediate to-do list was to change the fuel tank. Since Maruti had stopped the production of the fuel tanks of the Zen, we had to resort to scrap dealers. And we ended up at one such scrap dealer at a place called Kanodar. Here's where they break up cars of all vintage and parts are sold. By the time we arrived, they had kept aside six fuel tanks for us to choose. And this was the first time I had visited a scrapyard. And God, I was completely taken aback by what I saw there. I mean, I saw cars of all types, new and old. Most were salvaged after accidents. Some had expired registrations and such. The owner wasn't any graduate, but he clearly knew his trade and knew what part retail for what value. At one corner, I saw a bunch of guys with a gas cutter cutting through the sheet metal of a car with no regard to safety, no glasses, no gloves, merrily cutting away one panel at a time. And on the other side, I saw a bunch of guys trying to unscrew the stuck fuel pump and the fuel gauge on what would be one of the prospective fuel tanks on my Zen. And that's when I noticed that two OEMs had supplied fuel pumps to Maruti for the Zen. One was Denso, which you can see here. The other was UCAL. There were no complaints with the fuel pump or the fuel gauge on my Zen. Just that I wanted these as pairs, just in case. So here's a chap cutting the frame near the windshield and breaking it down. Just look at all these guys. I'm sure we can spend an entire day at a place like this, just going through all the parts and collecting whatever we want for dirt cheap prices. And then we had people who would come to check out my Zen I had parked outside the scrapyard, asking some questions like, how old is this car? Is this first hand or pre-owned? What is the mileage or kitna deti hai, etc. And when they see the TN registration plate, they would go on to ask, was the car driven from TN to Gujarat? Yes, sir, I would probably say. So we finally settled for a fuel tank, which was in reasonably good shape, a fuel gauge and a fuel pump for Rs. 1,500. The tank did have some rust inside and we got a good deal for the three parts, including a Denso fuel pump. Now take a look at this clip that shows the rust inside the tank. Now this clip was shot almost a year after the purchase of the tank from the salvage yard, but I had to get the tank out and get it cleaned thoroughly. And I was about to attempt a DIY, which we all have learned during our high school days, electrolysis. So the first order of business was to get the fuel tank out of the car's belly, which we did, and remove the fuel pump, the fuel gauge, and essentially all the attachments. And the fuel pump comes out. Notice that the filter is clean. Now, since the car had slightly less than half a tank of fuel, we had to pump it out into storage cans using a 12 volt inline pump. Okay guys, time for some theory class on electrolysis. So this is a basic circuit diagram which shows the various parts. The thick black box is a fuel tank, which is the cathode. A mild steel pipe works as the anode. You can essentially use any mild steel part such as a rebar used for construction. The electrolyte is a solution of washing soda and water. I used approximately 100 grams of washing soda for 30 liters of water, which is nearly a tank full. You can get washing soda in supermarkets and is dirt cheap. Notice that the anode is suspended from above and should not touch any part of the fuel tank. Be careful of this aspect. Finally, the power source. I used a plus 12 volt car battery, which was connected to a battery charger. The positive terminal from the battery to the mild steel pipe and the negative to the fuel tank. Basically any bare screw or pipe, which is not painted. So here's how the entire setup looked like. What you see is the mild steel pipe suspended into the tank using an old discarded cricket bat, which acts as an insulator. The tank is topped up with the electrolyte solution containing washing soda. Some were spilled on top of the tank. Never mind that. The pipe is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the fuel tank inlet to the negative terminal. The battery is being charged using a 12 volt charger. All right, guys, six hours in, the moment of truth. Let's remove the steel pipe and check its condition. <laughs> this is amazing, guys. The sacrificial anode has truly worked like it should. The pipe has attracted all the rust from inside the tank. 
Remember, more the surface area of the anode, the better it works. Clearly, the pipe is better at it than a rebar with a smaller cross section. We then disconnect the electrical connections and discard the solution and give it a thorough cleaning using fresh water. Okay guys, you ready for this? Check out the comparison. Honestly, even I was surprised at the final result. All the rust inside was completely gone, leaving the bare sheet metal. This turned out to be a really good uh, DIY, a great learning experience, essentially recalling what we had all learned during our school days. I did this at a nearby garage and the staff there were quite amused with the result. This was also the first time they had seen something like this. Check out the condition of the mild steel pipe after the experiment. This green deposit you see is essentially the rust. Now that we had cleaned the internals of the fuel tank, one last thing remained, giving it a good coat of paint on the outside. So the flanges and all the exposed pipes were sealed with masking tape and we gave it a good coat of black spray paint all around. That sort of gave it a closure to this activity. Finally, all the tubes and hoses, the fuel pump, the fuel gauge and the vapor separator tank were installed on the fuel tank and we installed the tank back. We did face an issue of fuel leaking through one of the hoses and it turned out to be a loose spring clamp which we promptly changed. That would be all guys. Trust you all like this video as much as I love doing it. Thank you so much. See you on another video.